We've been living in Bali for the past seven months and sometimes it's really hard to relax there. So we decided to hop on a plane, head over to neighboring Lombok and then catch a boat to the Gili Islands. But should Lombok and Gili be part of your itinerary if you're just going there for a few weeks? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, welcome to Gilly Menno. Hi, I'm Veronica. Welcome to my channel, My Film Nomad, where we talk all things digital nomad life, travel, and remote work, and of course, mindset and mindfulness. We really looked and we couldn't find a comprehensive itinerary where we could see what was really cool to see and hopefully this will be useful to you so keep watching and don't forget to subscribe and like because that really helps. When people talk about Gili, they think that, you know, it's Bali. Uh, there's, there's people who even think that Bali is its own country. It's not, it's a province in Indonesia. Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the world. So Bali is Hindu, so the culture and everything there is completely different. And Lombok, uh, Gili, and basically all the other provinces are Muslim. So even if Lombok is quite similar to Bali in regards to, you know, the scenery, it's not really the same because of this huge cultural change. I mean, you've got mosques every few hundred meters in the Gili Islands. You've got one mosque per island. They're very small islands, so you're not going to have more than that. You can actually cycle around. And this is the smallest out of the three main Gili Islands. You've got Gili T and Gili Air. We're only going to do Gili Menno, and then we're going to go to Lombok and see what it looks like um, there. Um, and we'll show you and hopefully you'll have an itinerary that you can use if you decide to, you know, get away from Bali for a week or so. There's a few things to see in Gili Menno, but the main attraction is snorkeling and scuba diving. You can also see sea turtles and just basically relax. There's a lot of construction going on, beach clubs being built, and the streets are all sand, but overall it's a super charming island. Two nights is what we did, and in my opinion, is more than enough. So I'm not sure if I fractured or sprained my hand, but I fell while going inside the pool, so we're going to have to head to uh, a hospital in Lombok and see what they tell me because I'm in a lot of pain. Now that the drama is over, um, I, <laughs> I basically hurt myself in the dumbest way possible. I slipped and fell um, in the pool and um, yesterday, yesterday I was in so much pain. Um, I honestly was super scared. I had fractured my hand because I, I, it just hurt so much. So I didn't even record anything um, in the hospital. <laughs> I wasn't in the in the mind space um, to do that. But um, yeah, turned out to be just a sprain. So we can continue. I just have to have my hand wrapped and just uh, take a few meds to feel better. Um, but yeah, doing much better today. Let's continue. So I'm here in Lombok at a small village at the foot of Mount Rinjani called Tete Batu. It's mainly rice fields everywhere. Um, in Mount Rinjani, it's a volcano, still active volcano, and the tallest point in the West Nogada province. Um, and it's around 3,726 meters. I don't know how I remember that. <laughs> I'll give you my first 
impressions of Lombok. It's actually, it's a beautiful place. Um, similar to Bali in the sense that of course you've got rice fields. It's just so naturally beautiful. I think there are quite a few differences between Lombok and Bali. Okay, so Lombok, as opposed to Bali, not many tourists. The tourists that you do get here a lot are the ones that are transiting to go to Gili. Uh, there are a few, but not as many as in Bali. Then the roads, I don't know if you can see this here, but this is like a small road at a very, very small village and it's immaculate. It's so good. Um, so the roads are amazing here. In Bali, they're not as great. So, uh, and because of the traffic in Bali, which you don't have here, it's also more difficult to drive there, which means driving here in Lombok is actually not that difficult. I still don't want to drive a bike <laughs> or a car, but I would feel more comfortable driving here than in Bali for sure. Another thing that's different is uh, you've got the mosques and you can hear them from everywhere and I mean everywhere. We were right in the middle of, a j of the jungle, literally, hiking and we could, we could hear the mosques. So you could just imagine at night time when you're trying to sleep. But anyway, yeah, a really cool place to um, hang out for a week or so. Definitely, if you come to Indonesia, it should be part of your itinerary. dangerous as the ones in Bali, so yeah, gotta be careful. The second waterfall was a bit of a, is a bit of a hike. One kilometer from the last one, I'll write the name here because I can't remember for my life. Um, but it's a bit of a hike. Uh, stairs, up, down ramps, doable, just bring the right shoes. Even if I'm sweating. <laughs> So this is Cola Printas. Um, they make it for you for the photo. This is gorgeous. It's a bit of a hike, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. So there are four waterfalls here. It takes 45 minutes there and back. If you want to do all four, we only did two, the two nicest ones. Um, and I think it was a good idea because the hike can be a little bit difficult. A lot of steps, monkeys along the way, slippery at some points, but if you come with the right shoes, trust me, you're not gonna regret it. You can also take a bath here. The thing is that you can't really wear a bathing suit only. You have to be covered with either a sarong because um, of course we always want to be respectful of the customs here. And as you know, it's a Muslim uh, island. So yeah, be respectful, but definitely come here and enjoy because it's wonderful and the people are so, so nice. Now we moved over to the south of the island where you can find the surf and we sit at this beautiful hotel. The prices in Kuta range from super cheap to okay to crazy expensive. And motorbike was our preferred way to travel. We were, had a guide take us around before, but this is honestly way cheaper and gives you more independence. 
We made it to Muon Beach, and that's the beach for beginners who like to give surfing a try. We did find a bit of trash, but we've seen this in Bali too. We don't know if it comes from the sea or it's just people being dirty at the beach, but it's kind of the norm around here. Other than that, definitely a place to check out. So we're at the Sankom market and they sell everything here, uh, fish, uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, clothes, everything. Today is not the day in which is, you know, like, uh, the fullest. It's more on Mondays and Tuesdays, but in general, um, it's actually pretty busy. Sade village is a traditional Sasak village. It's right in the middle of Kuta, which is pretty cool. This particular village is managed as a tourist village initiated by the local tourism officials. And this thing you see me trying here is how women make beautiful garments. And from what was explained to me, in order for a woman to be able to get married, she needs to learn how to weave with this technique. You can see our guide, Leah. She's part of five local Sasak women that organize tours for tourists. And you can find the link to their Instagram in the description. They're amazing guides, so don't hesitate to contact them if you're thinking of going to Kuta. We are at the top and you can see the whole village right behind me. Um, it's, there's around 400 people living here and around 150 families because they're big families. Yeah pretty cool place people live inside these houses they don't have much it's just a room or two depending on how big the family is and they cook outside Our stay in Lombok and Gili has come to an end. I really hope you liked this video and 10 out of 10 recommend Lombok if you want to get away from the craziness of Bali or even if you're coming to Indonesia for just a few days. I'll see you next time.